Welcome back ladies and gentlemen. Today I'm going to give you an overview of the stats project that you're going to be completing this week. Throughout this video I will be showing you how to do each step but ultimately you'll have to do your own work but so long as you follow the methods that we show in this video you will be able to cruise through this project without issue. In this project you're going to go and find two large data sets somewhere out on the internet and you're going to use Google Sheets to perform statistical calculations for each data set. Additionally, you're going to make a box and whisker plot for both sets, and then you're going to use the information that you gain to analyze each data set that you've found. Along the way, I'll give you some tips and helpful hints of how to find a good data set, and the main task will be to get you to know how to use Google Sheets to do all the statistical calculations that we've done in the past couple weeks. The first thing you'll need for this project is a whole bunch of resources, and if you go to Schoology or the Kadera Math website, you will be able to find several resources. The project guide, which I have right here, uh, this is what it looks like. The video, which will be uploaded soon, uh, the one that I'm making right now, and the stats project spreadsheet itself. You can find all these resources on Schoology and on the Kadera Math website. The stats project guide will be your main source of information to complete this project and you can see that this is a actually a three page document giving you a list of instructions and giving you some more information as it becomes relevant as you get into the project. But without further delay let's take a look at what you're expected to produce. So if you go to Schoology or if you go to the Kadera Math website you'll see this uh, link to a spreadsheet that says stat project uh, spreadsheet. Uh, if you go ahead and click on this link right there, a copy of this Google Sheet will open up. And the first thing you're going to want to do, because this is a non-editable copy, is you're going to want to make a copy for yourself. So make a copy while you're signed into your Google Drive, and that will allow you to edit the document. What you're going to do is you are going to find two large data sets with at least 50 items each. So you can see I did something with the birth and death rate of each state and since there's 50 states plus a couple of provinces etc I got I think 53 data points in each set here. We're going to use Google Sheets to perform some pretty massive calculations. We're going to go find the min max, q1, median, q3, mean, mode, standard deviation, interquartile range, basically everything that you've calculated over the last two weeks we're going to program into Google Sheets to help you do it automatically and quickly for a large data set. And when you're complete with this uh, you'll get a list of numbers here and you'll produce a box and whisker plot for your set of data as well. Now you see down along the bottom is the most important interface that you need to know about, which is all five tabs of this document. The first one is just an example for you to follow along with this video. So I actually want you to go to the website and download this sheet, make yourself a copy, and get this sheets up in front of you so that as we go through this video you can follow along with me. The second tab is basically an answer key. So it has all the correct numerical values here. It does not have the formulas in it. So you see that it's just reading out a, a number up here, not anything that we typed in. So it's not giving you the answer. It, well, it's giving you the numerical answer, but it's not telling you uh, what exactly to type into each cell. And then this is what the box and whisker plot is. So by the time we're done with this together in the video, your screen should look like this. The third tab in here is another set of state information. This time there's three items being compared. And your job, this is your formative assignment, so I'm giving you the data and you have to chug out all the results here and produce a box and whisker plot so that yours basically looks like this. Now again, this is an answer key, but it doesn't give you what you're supposed to type in each cell. It just tells you the final answer of the calculation. The fourth tab on this project is your actual summative project, the final project, where you're going to fill in a data set of your choice uh, and a second data set of your choice. Then you're going to crunch all the numbers in this region and produce a box and whisker. Plot. Lastly, there's an analysis tab which just asks you a few questions that are stated on the project guide, but you also need to respond to these questions uh, while referencing your data from your final project. So let's get to it. Let's pretend that we were doing our final project even though you may not feel ready for that at all right now, but let's pretend we want to do our final project right now. Well first things first, I don't have any data. So this is where you get to be creative and on the stats project one of the things on the first page is a big long list of things, basically ideas of data sets that you might want to compare. Choose something of interest to you, choose something that's going to hold, you know, what are you interested in, what 
two data sets might you want to compare? So a whole bunch of ideas here. You just got to go out on the internet and find two data sets with at least 50 items each. So here's a couple examples of what I typed into Google here. I typed in hockey stats and I got like five or six websites that basically go throughout NHL history. Basically, if you click on this, you get everything about a player, a team, a season, etc. You can do the same thing for basketball, states. So I did statistics by states and I came up with this Statista website, which is lovely. It gives you stats on pretty much everything. You can go, go baseball, basketball, ESPN, its actual homepage right here. If you go through any of the major sports right here, you'll see a little spot uh, right down here in pretty much every category that says stats. And if you click on that, you'll get stats for teams or stats for players or whatever. And you can see it's under pretty much every major, well, not every, I suppose, but pretty much every sport that is on their page. And obviously we're in a bit of a weird situation where we haven't had that many games played. Uh, but if you go to the tabs right here, you can see that they go back in history throughout the years. So this one step of acquiring your data is just going to be a little bit more time consuming that I'm willing to go through here. Uh, but once you have your data, remember each data set has to have 50 items in it. So if you go complete leaders or whatever website you're using, you got to find a data set with at least 50 items in it. And once you do that, you can sometimes copy and paste the data. So just highlight, copy and paste, and you can go ahead and paste it right there. Or sometimes you just have to type it in. And worst case scenario, you're typing in 100 numbers. It's not the end of the world. It's just a little less efficient than ideal. But once you have your data, you can go ahead and type it in right here and type it in right here. And if you're a paper pencil type person, there's another spot on the guide just so you can record your data right here. So you don't have to look at like three different windows when you're on your screen. So let's go back to our stats project. I'm going to go to the raw data tab right here and I want you to follow along with me. So this is some data that I found. I've pre-entered it. So it's all there. But now I want to explain to you how to calculate each thing. So the minimum value, the mean, mode, range median, etc. Even the standard deviation we can do very quickly in this uh, in this program. Within Sheets, the biggest thing that you need to understand is how to know a cell's address. These things, these boxes that I'm clicking on here, these are called cells, and you need to know what their address is. And if you've ever played the game Battleship, you'll know what I'm talking about here. So if I zoom in here a little bit, this cell right here that's highlighted, I would call that cell B4 because it's in the column of B's and row four within column B. And that is how we tell this computer program what number you want within a formula. The second thing that you need to know is that these cells will allow you to type pretty much any number in it or any text in there that you want, but it doesn't calculate something unless you tell it to calculate something. So the way you tell it to calculate something is you start whatever it is with an equal sign. So if I type in equal sign as my first character inside that cell, it is now telling the software, I'm going to calculate these numbers together. So for instance, say I wanted to add these two numbers together right here. These, this would be in C3 and C4. So those two numbers, for those two cells together, let's say I just wanted to add those together. What I'm going to say in this cell, if I wanted the sum in that spot, is I would say C3, plus C4. And you can see that it highlights the cells that it's doing and the equal sign tell it, told it that it's going to perform a calculation. And you can see that that is the sum of those two cells. And even if I change this value to like 60,000, you can see that this updates that amount. So one of the things that I'm going to be doing when I'm grading your summative assignment is I'm going to go change a number and I should see all these numbers change in response to me changing just that one number. The second thing I want to point out about formulas is you can see the formula being written out right there. That's what I typed into the cell and when I hit enter, when it evaluates, it displays the sum of the numbers, not the formula anymore. But you can see the formula is preserved up in this bar. So as I go ahead and type stuff into these boxes, you'll be able to see what I'm typing up in this formula bar as I highlight each one of the cells. So pay attention to that. The other thing that you can do, which is often handy, is let's say I didn't want to type everything, you can actually just go click on the cell. So if I go click on that cell and then hit the plus sign and then go click on another cell and then maybe click on another cell, I can add up uh, those things. And if I even wanted to, I can select a range of cells by clicking and dragging through that range. I don't know if this is going to make any sense to uh, the formula, but uh, if I hit enter, it's probably going to give me an error. Yep, you see that? So you do have to be character perfect, no spaces, nothing fancy, uh, and it has to make sense. It, this says 
take a number, add it to another number, add it to another number, and then add it to a range of numbers. It doesn't view each individual item in that range as a separate number. Uh, it's just saying add three individual things to a list of seven things, or however many things I selected there. Let's get started. I'm just going to undo my changes there, just so that we don't, uh, we don't have any issues when you follow along with me. Once you have your data entered, then you're tasked with calculating all of these numbers for each data set. So you'll have data set number one and you'll have data set number two. The one thing about each one of these items is that these programs are pretty darn smart. So if you don't know the name of a calculation that you want, oftentimes just start typing it. So if I start off it, and again, I'm asking it to calculate something, I'm asking go find the minimum value uh, in this case. If I just start typing minimum, you can see that there is a formula that automatically pops up and says, do you want to find the minimum of this? I can select this or just type a parenthesis to open up a parenthesis and it says, what do you want to find the minimum of? And in this case, you can select this and it says, okay, I neither need to enter a value, a list of values or a range of values. Okay. So this, that little question mark off to the side there will give you help for each formula that pops up. Now for minimum, all you have to do is highlight all of the cells. So I'm going to click and drag all the way down here, all the way down to the bottom. And you can see that the formula filled in automatically for me B3 through B54. And then the only thing that's missing is I have to close the parentheses. You can also hit enter. But if I hit enter, as soon as I do that, the minimum number of births in any state was 48,976. So if I were to search through all these numbers, the lowest number in that list would be 48,000. Now, not every formula is perfectly intuitive like that. So over in the stats project, I actually gave you a list of all the formulas that might be useful to you. So uh, if you'd like to reference the number in a cell, you can just say equals whatever that cell number is. Um, min, max, mode, median, quartile. We're going to use this one next in standard deviation. So all of these kind of say what these, which ones are actually programmed into the spreadsheet and how you use them. And you can always hit that question mark that we saw. So for Q1, uh, you may have noticed there's one that's called quartile. We're, we're going to use that one. Okay, so we're going to hit an equal sign first, and then we're going to type in quartile. And uh, what it needs is it needs the range of numbers that we're going to search. So I'm going to go highlight this again. I'm going to close that parentheses or just hit enter. Okay. And you say, oh, well, it needed one more thing. If we look back in here, it, sees it needs the data set and it needs which quartile you want. Okay, so I actually have to physically type a comma and say that I want the first quartile. So I, you see I've typed a one right there. So quartile one, bam. And for quartile three, I bet you can guess what we're going to type in. We're going to type in equals quartile. That's going to give us that formula. I'm going to highlight my data set again. So I'm going to drag it all the way down or I can type in b3 colon b54 i'm going to hit comma and this time i want the third quartile so you can see me typing right up here b3 through b54 and i want the third quartile here so i can either close the parentheses or just hit enter i just hit enter there and that is the third quartile of that data for the median you may have noticed that was a separate function right there i might be able to do quartile too but let's try doing just the median here so i'm going to say equals median and then it's going to say what range of values would you like to search for a median? So again, I'm going to highlight all my data. Just click and drag all the way through. Hit enter. And there's a median. And we should look at this and just make sure that the numbers are going up because the minimum value should be less than the quartile one and so on. And then I need a max. Let's see if there was a formula for that. There is. It's just max. And again, I could probably just start taking a guess and say typing it. So I'm going to type in max my parentheses, and then I'm going to highlight all the information that I want to find the maximum of. Hit enter and move on to the next one. Okay, now this one says IQR, that's inner quartile range of the box and whisker plot, which is the difference between uh, Q3 and Q1. And if I go look at my formula list, there's no formula for IQR there. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm just going to brute force it. I'm going to do it by hand. I'm going to say, okay, the IQR is Q3 minus Q1. So I'm going to hit an equal sign and I'm going to say, take the number that we have for Q3, that's that one, and I'm going to subtract the number that we have for Q1. And that will get me my IQR, just like normal. So you can see what I typed in there. I just typed in equals F6 minus F4. And actually, I didn't even type in F6 and F4. I just clicked on them. Go ahead and hit enter, and there's your IQR. The range would be max minus min. So I'm going to do something very similar here. I'm just going to say equals max 
minus min. Hit enter. Bam. There we go. There's our range. Next one on the list is mean. If I go to my formula sheet, you'll see, oh, there's no mean here. Um, that's kind of a weird one. Uh, but what's a different word for mean? So if, let's, let's see if it's there, even though I didn't list it. So mean, uh, it did not come up with anything automatically. So let's, another word for mean is average. And look at that. There's average. And then click and drag on your data. So click and drag. Hit enter. Does that seem reasonable? Sure it does. All right, mode. Was there a formula for mode? Yes, there was. Just type in mode equals mode, of course. So we're going to equals mode and then highlight our data set. All the way down to the bottom. No further than the bottom, though. Hit enter. Um, now that said not applicable. Uh, mode cannot produce a result if values don't occur more than once. Well, that makes sense if there's no mode. So there would have to be an identical number of births in one state for one year. Uh, that seems unlikely. So it would make sense that there's no mode. Now, standard deviation, remember how complicated the, the process is to calculate a standard deviation? Well, right here, it's built into this spreadsheet. So we can do this very quest. STDEV is the abbreviation for it. So we're going to go equals STDEV and then highlight the data set again. So we're going to click and drag all the way through the entire data set. Go ahead and hit enter, and our standard deviation is done just like that in three seconds. Now that saved us a whole bunch of time. This would have been a lot of work by hand with 50 items in a data set. So you can see how Sheets is much more efficient. Now it gets even better than that though. Now do you have to go through and enter each one of those formulas in each one of these boxes? Well you could, but Sheets is so smart that see this little box down here this says continue the pattern and if I click and drag this over to the right what it's going to do is it's going to continue the pattern but it's going to shift one column to the right so instead of referencing the data in column B it's going to reference the data in column C instead so it's going to do all those formula calculations if I just let go of that automatically so basically what I said to the computer is do everything you just did for uh, column B, but now this time do it for column C. And so long as your data sets are the same size, this will be completely accurate. So just by doing this first row and then dragging over to the right, so I'm just clicking and dragging on that little box down there, I have calculated all the measures of center and measures of spread for the deaths by state. So that is all the stats calculated. The last thing that you're asked to do is to insert a candlestick or a box and whisker plot. Uh, this program calls it a candlestick plot, but it's a box and whisker plot as we've referred to it. So I'm going to zoom out a little bit uh, to do this. And what you have to do to do a box and whisker plot is you have to click and drag through the top five, uh, top six uh, rows of your table right here, because it's going to use the minimum Q1, median Q3, and max for the box and whisker plot. And we also want to highlight the title of each one. So we want to be very careful about which cells we highlight. Okay, then you're going to go over here to insert and you're going to insert a chart and that's going to bring up a little menu over here. And right now it's a bar graph. We don't want that. So we're going to go up to the top of the setup chart and right here it says what tar chart type do you want? I don't want a column chart. I'm going to go all the way down to the bottom. The candlestick plot or the box and whisker plot is down there almost all the way at the bottom. And I'm going to click that. And sometimes it'll give you an error like this, and that's because it's wondering whether your data is stacked vertically like ours is or horizontally. So way down at the bottom of this setup tab right here, you'll see a little box you can check right here that says switch rows or columns. So this is going to tell it that I'm stacking my data vertically rather than horizontally. And you can see automatically it creates a box and whisker plot for you, and you can go ahead and squeeze that into a viewable area however you see fit on your document. If you've been following along, hopefully your screen looks like mine, and hopefully our screen looks like this uh, as the answer key uh, when we're done here. Um, your next job is to do the same thing to Raw Data 2, uh, this tab right here, and your answer key is right here, but remember you want to enter in the formulas here so that when I change a number, see right now if I change a number to like 5,000 here, nothing changes over here because these are static values. So if I undo that, um, Whereas if I do it on the one that we just finished, okay, if I type in uh, 55 million, okay, I think that's 55 million, you can see that the numbers over here all changed, okay? So I should see this 
in interactiveness on your final project. And I should be able to click on these cells and read out these formulas when you share this document with me. Okay, so your job is to do this, this raw data right here. This is your formative assignment. And then once you're comfortable with that, then move on to your final project. You'll have to produce your own data or go find your own data. Um, you can go three wide, just like in raw data two, if you wanted to. The only difference here is you're going to select all, you know, all this range when you make your box and whisker plot to make a triple box and whisker plot. But do your final project. And then there's a few questions to answer right over here. And that's your final project done. You want to submit it on Schoology as a Google Sheet. If you have any questions, and I'm sure you will, I encourage you to talk with your math teacher either during office hours from 9 to 11 or just email them as you have questions. Until next time, I'll see you then.